so it's my pleasure to in, in, yeah, introduce my friend, Emmanuel Marini, who is going to talk to you about more than just preparing minerals, but the reasons why we prepare them and how the trend in preparing and cleaning is changing as, as minerals emerges from a hobby to an asset class similar to other art forms. Em? Hello. Hi, Rob. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> we are going to talk about mineral, uh, modern mineral preparation. Let me introduce you uh, quickly a modern point of view regarding the mineral specimens. We have been used to see mineral specimens and maybe we have never been used to compare mineral specimens with pieces of art. Okay? But if we think about something, uh, both items are unique and they are good to be preserved. Okay. They are both unique, but the mineral specimens have something additional from the pieces of art, because the pieces of art are made by the hand of a human being. Instead, the mineral specimens are made by the modern nature. By nature. Okay. So I would call now on mineral specimen as a piece, as a piece of natural art. Okay. The mission, actually, of a mineral laboratory preparation is the same as an art preparation lab, which is the preservation of the specimens that we find. The specimens are usually found not in the best shape, so we have to prepare them, to process them, to bring the specimens back to the original appearance, as Mother Nature has been creating them. All these processes, all what we are doing in the laboratory, must be a preservative uh, treatment. That means that we have to preserve the specimen to be able to see and to observe the specimen in the future in the respect of the specimen itself without altering its nature. Okay? All the treatments to prepare the specimens both in the arts and in the mineral world are equally worthy and required by analogy. If we think about the um, source of mineral specimens and uh, pieces of art, they could be sometime very similar in the processes. Mineral specimens and pieces of art have often, are often found in diggings, that means, have we been, have, as we have been seeing in the movie of uh, Federico Barlocher, uh, mineral specimens are found in diggings and uh, it's extremely different to have them, to obtain them. Pottery as well, for example, this is an archaeological digging where they found a good quantity of pottery, unfortunately damaged. And this is a quarry where we can find specimens, okay, so as well is diggings. Both items, mineral specimens and archaeological repairs and painting and statues, are then brought, once they've been found, to the laboratories to process them. That means to clean the specimens, to restore and repair in case it's needed. Okay. This is the pottery that has been found in the previous digging, broken on the process to be repaired. This is a piece of a mineral specimen that is going to be presented later that has been found broken and now is in the process to be cleaned and repaired and restored. Why we do all these things? Because these items need to be preserved to be exhibited in museums and or in private collection. For example, for the art and archaeological items, this is a hall of the Archaeological Museum in Padova, Italy, full of nice repairs. And this is the Lida Hill Hall at the Peru Museum, so where we can observe both min, um, potteries and archaeological items in the Museum of Padova and mineral specimens, fantastic mineral specimens, in the Puro Museum. We have been developing in the mineral world preparation uh, some techniques and we have been taking some of them also from the art world. Okay? We have been uh, inspired by some treatments and some techniques from these worlds. For example, uh, the art has been from the art world, we have been taking the idea of repairs and restores. 
For example, this is a piece of uh, a very important statue that has been found broken in several pieces and then through the process of repairs and restoration has been then bring it back as it has been created by the human being. The archaeological preservation has been also an <clears throat> a point of source, a source for some techniques that are now applied to mineral specimens. And this is a digging where they have been finding um, the, the rests of a boat, okay? and the boat is made by wood. The wood is something that is easily deperishing. So they have to treat the wood in a special way with special techniques to avoid the, the perishing and to preserve the wood. We have been doing the same on some specific specimens and some specific mineralogical species. From the fossil world preparation, we have been using and acquiring techniques for trimming. Okay? All the trimming techniques that we are using nowadays in the mineral world to reduce the matrix, to clean and to achieve the best proportion in between the matrix and the crystals has been taken by the fossil world. What happens when a specimen has been found, then has been brought to the laboratory? Oh, okay, so this is not what's going to happen when they come to the laboratory, but sometimes, you know, sorry. <laughs> okay, this is not usually what happened, anyway. So, um, in a laboratory, uh, we have several processes that has been applied to the specimen in a specific order, okay? As soon as... Uh, the specimen has been found, is full of oxides and mud, etc. So then we, previous to make any kind of treatment or further specific treatments, we have to clean the specimen itself to understand what is below the oxides and below the mud and the pocket clay and everything. Okay. So to do these things, we applied some basic uh, chemical processes, very smooth solutions and uh, basic things to remove the iron stain and the mud. For example, this specimen needed just uh, basic chemical cleaning to remove the iron stain and to bring back the specimen as it has been created. This is the result after some basic cleanings. Okay? As you can see, all the iron stain that was bringing uh, not a natural color, not the original color of the specimen, of the, of the mineralogical species present on the specimen, was alterating. So we had to remove smoothly all this iron stain to bring back the specimen as it has been created. So you have no alteration of colors and everything. So this is the real uh, topic of the basic, clinic, uh, basic chemical cleaning. After the basic chemical cleaning, uh, we have been seeing how the specimen is, what are the main crystals, the most important crystals on the specimen. We go through the process of trimming. Trimming is a process where we reduce the volume of the matrix, exposing and giving the best balance in between the volume of the crystal and the volume of the matrix to obtain also the best display available without any use potentially with stands, etc. An example is this fluoride from France. As you can see, this is a nice plate of fluoride uh, pictured on some coarse matrix and it has also a nice association of uh, a nice crystal of barite. Uh, this specimen was heavily damaged on the left side. So then, in the laboratory, we, start, we cleaned the piece, we decided then to remove all this part of the specimen that was heavily damaged to enhance the beauty and to keep and to trim out one specimen with the best crystal and the best association possible. And this is the result. So from this object that was unbalanced and not nice, and of course this was not clean yet, we reached this result. Cleaning with chemical processes and then trimming with mechanical processes. So it's a combination. The result is a combination of different processes. Another example of 
trimming and the combination of other processes is this fluoride from Italy. As you, as you well know, um, Italian alpine fluoride are extremely rare. This is a specimen coming from a quarry in uh, the Piedmont area, famous quarry Beura. This specimen, as you can see, had a very bad balance. Basically, there was no way to display, to show perfectly the crystal of pink fluoride that is here on the left side. So we cleaned chemically and we studied the aesthetic and to obtain the best balance. And this is the result. Okay? We removed almost all the matrix around, leaving just a few matrix here to give a little bit of contrast. And then through chemical processes, we removed the iron stain and we also stabilized the crystal because the fluoride is, some, is a mineral that is extremely sensible to temperature exchanging, to temperature gaps. So as you can see, there were some fracture in this crystal that we had to stabilize to preserve the crystal itself because maybe in the future, near future or longer future, this crystal itself could have been totally fractured and then fall apart by itself. So our topic, our um, treatment, basically consolidated the crystal in order to preserve the crystal itself for the future. There are some mineral specimens, some mineral uh, species that are extremely sensible to chemicals. So we have to study and to evaluate every time each specimen in order to achieve the best result without damaging the specimen itself because it's very easy to process something and to damage itself the specimen. So the target again of a mineralogical laboratory um, is to preserve the specimen in the respect of the shape, the quality of the specimen itself. That means not to create damages on the specimen during the treatments. This is a very nice fluoride from France, from Puy saint golmier This locality has been producing some very nice fluoride of a fantastic uh, blue color. In Europe, we call this color galoise because the pocket of cigarettes from the miners is the blue galoise. So this is the blue galoise fluoride. As you can see, the specimen had some area with uh, mud, still mud, and iron stain, and uh, it was not so well balanced. So you see that these edges and this area without crystals were a little bit bothering, okay? But the specimen itself had a very good luster and it was pristine with no damages. So the, the specimen didn't need any restoration. So this is the result after the process. As you can see, we have been removing all the matrix, all the ugly, not nice, let's say, matrix around. We have been cleaning chemically the specimen, taking particular care about the luster because the luster on fluoride is extremely easy to damage. Okay? In a few seconds, you can totally kill a fluoride specimen, losing totally the, the, the luster, and then you will destroy the specimen. So it's mandatory for a mineralogical lab to study and to evaluate each specimen that we are processing. Because for example, the fluoride itself can change the reaction with some acid from locality to locality, okay? Depending on the composition of the environment of the specimen itself where it, been, where it has been found, okay? So some fluorides are less sensible than others to some treatments, okay? And this is very important to to know because otherwise really you can kill something like that and you will cry for the whole life. <laughs> okay, so this is a treatment that I've been already talking about when we have been looking at the, the slide of the alpine fluoride. Fracture stabilization. This is a specimen of fluoride found in Dalnergosk in Russian Siberia. Uh, these specimens to be brought to Europe, they have to travel, to make a long travel. 
and they have to go through the whole Siberia on trains and uh, very, very, it's a very, very long and tricky travel from the mine to the Europe. So the miners themselves, they know that the temperature is extremely dangerous for the fluorides. So as we know, Siberia is an extremely cold country and these cracks probably have been produced during the travel due to the temperature exchanges. The miner themselves, they know that this can happen. And to avoid the going through of these cracks that were originally created by the nature or by the extraction, they soak the specimen into oil because the oil stabilizes the cracks. Once they come to the lab, okay, we have to remove completely the oil because the oil is unstable. Okay? And then we have to clean chemically and then we have to reproduce the stabilization. That means we have to add something that is not oil, that is going not to be altered with the time. Okay? And why we do this? To preserve the specimen, to avoid that these cracks in, with the time can go through and then disintegrate the crystal themselves. So the result of the process is this one. We have a complete chemical cleaning, complete removal of the iron stain and then we have filled the cracks stabilizing the specimen itself. This is an extremely important process to preserve the specimens because in few years this specimen could have been totally destroyed by, them, by itself and temperature exchanging and also humidity etc. So this is a very very important process. As I said before we found some specimens that are naturally broken in the pockets, okay? as well as some art pieces, statues that have been broken with the time, pottery that has been broken during the time and then found back in the diggings. Okay, so this is an example of the pottery of the amphora that has been brought to the laboratory to be repaired and restored. This is an example of something that we found nowadays in the mine. This is a tourmaline from Brazil. And uh, very often, the tourmalines are found in the pockets already broken. Why? Because very often, the pigmatites are subject to some tectonic events and stress. And unfortunately, again, the nature uh, break these things Okay, so we found broken crystals already in the pockets, it's not due to the miners or the bad mining or bad processes to, ex to extract the specimen from the pocket. This is as it has been found in the pocket, okay, so broken. Luckily, we have been able to explain to the miners that they have to keep everything that they are finding in the pocket because sometimes they were stealing crystals, okay, that were gemmier to bring them to the gem market to be cut. And then what happened? You lose maybe this crystal because it's been cut, and then you have just this thing that has no sense. Okay, so part of the preservation process is to explain at the source the idea to preservation, to keep everything in order to be able to rebuild the specimens as, it has, as they, has been, they have been created by Mother Nature. So this is a very important process. This is the amphora, the pottery after repair and restoration. And this is the tourmaline that without our help, without our work, would not have been existing nowadays because the miners could have been stolen, the gemmier part cut, and without the work of the laboratory, we wouldn't have been able to observe this fantastic specimen repaired. Okay. But with the repair, we can see now this specimen. We can have this specimen. Another important process that comes almost, uh, the restoration is almost the last process that we do in the laboratory. The restoration. What happens sometimes? As it happened with art items, this is a very nice statua, broken with the time. This is a very nice fluoride found, found in Poland. As you can see, this fluoride was found broken and the miners put them, put the pieces back together 
to reconstruct the specimen. So this is a very important point because that means that the miner themselves understood that it's important to preserve and to rebuild the specimen, basically in a very rough way, but so far we have the specimen. So the specimen came to the lab and you see clearly here the fractures and some missing areas, as well as the, art, the statua. The statua has been found with broken parts, missing parts, has been then processed, cleaned and processed in the laboratory before the restoration and the repairs. The same happened to the fluorite, found from the miner, repaired roughly, and then came back to the laboratory. We unglued the specimen okay, to process with a very good cleaning, chemical cleaning, and then, as it happened for the statua, we have back the statua and we have back the fluorite as it was originally. No more fractures and no more missing parts. And now we can see and we can have the specimen. This is important because before, years ago, this specimen without these techniques and without this idea wouldn't exist anymore because this would have been trashed. And this is a very, very important topic because as I said before, these items, mineral specimens, have something more than art. These are made by the nature, nature, and these are unique, extremely unique. You can make copies of these fantastic statua, pottery, and uh, paintings, or whatever art is. But of this, it's impossible to make the copy. So you have just this one. You can have a similar one, but never, you can never have another that is exactly the same. So each mineral specimen is extremely unique, more unique than a statua. Sometimes, well, as we know, the repairs and uh, the idea of repairs and the idea of processing minerals is not uh, recently, is not recent. In the past, some specimens have been already repaired and cleaned with different techniques that nowadays are obsolete, maybe with different materials that today are obsolete and with materials that had changed the aspect with the time, they altered themselves, okay? The material that has been used to make the repairs. This is a very good example. This is an Erkimer quartz cluster crystals. As you can see, there are some yellow areas here, 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 and this area also. This specimen has been cleaned and repaired about 15, 20 years ago, I guess. And the glue that they have been using has been deteriorating with the time. At the beginning, the glue was not visible. Nowadays, it's visible because it became yellow. It altered by itself. So we had to remove all the glue, clean completely the specimen, and remake all the work for repair to match back the specimen, to match back all the crystals. So there was also a very complicated work to find again the matching. And this is the result. This is the same specimen, almost in the same picture, <laughs> in the same position, processed with modern techniques. New material for repairing, new material for cleaning, that especially the material that we use for repairing are more stable. Okay, so this specimen potentially we don't know yet because we have been using this material since 10 years, so we have a, a statistic of 10 years of time. But so far, these materials are not alterating at all. So I have specimens that I have been repairing with these techniques and with this new material 10 years ago, and the repairs are looking exactly the same. So this is a very good result for the modern preparation because we are not having any more alteration of the material themselves. So the specimen is not, going, is not going to be reprocessed in the future, unless it will be broken because it will fail or whatever. But this is a very important topic also because the target of a mineralogical, modern mineralogical laboratory is also the research of new material and new techniques to achieve the best result with the most long-lasting time. Now I have some examples of uh, specimens before cleaning, before processing, and after processing. 
Everybody knows the amethyst quartz from Namibia, the chapter, very good color, very nice shape, fantastic pieces, okay. This is exactly how they come to the laboratory. So, for example, this specimen was a kind of a brick because they found in the mine, they cut with the saw to preserve what is inside. You barely can see what is inside because the pocket, the entry, the, the opening is very small and the crystal is almost all covered by carbonates and it's not possible to see what is inside exactly. So we have to, what we had to do? We had to open the pocket and clean with some basic chemical treatments to understand what is inside the pocket. At this point, we have to study the piece to understand if there are some natural cracks to stabilize the specimen, if it is necessary. And then we have to understand how to process, which part we have to remove first, then we have to etch again the calcite to see how it is going, the process, to avoid any damages. Because as I said before, it's important that in the laboratory, the specimens are not damaged, okay? And this is the final result. This is the crystal that is here. So an extremely long and intensive process from the mine, actually from the mine to the lab, and then in the lab, quick cleaning and opening of the pocket to study and to also imagine what could have been the final shape. And then this is it. Because we have to understand, we have to study the pieces to understand which is the best shape potentially that we can give to the specimen. And this is the result. This is a fantastic piece. This crystal is almost 11 centimeter. It's a very good chapter. Another example is a very nice fluorite from France. This fluorite has been found during the operation period of the mine. So they have been found during blasting and very bad handling. So as you can see, almost this area is almost broken, heavily broken, missing parts, missing edges of the crystals due to the blasting to the wave shock wave. And then we have also here a missing crystal just on the main, missing piece, missing slice of the crystal, missing corner just on the main crystal. So we have been deciding to process this specimen and to go for uh, restoration because this piece is fantastic. This crystal is almost 10 centimeter wide. So we have been doing several treatments to obtain this result. This is exactly the same specimen without all the broken crystal here. We trimmed out this. We gave, we removed also all this part here that was all broken with contacts to expose in the best way the main crystal. And as you can see, we made also the restoration here. Why we made the restoration? It's an aesthetic restoration because we want to have the specimens as they have been created, like a piece of art, okay? So this is the final result with the restoration here. And this is a fantastic piece after cleaning and all the processes. Without these techniques and without the uh, idea of preservation, this specimen probably would not uh, have been here like that. Another example, is a very nice calcite from India. We have been used to see in the showcases, in the show of dealers, etc. very nice calcite from India, extremely gemmy, very lustrous, on a small matrix and nice objects. This is how they are found, okay? Luckily, in India, they understood that they need to make big blocks to preserve the cluster of crystals. So I received this specimen in this shape. This was actually 40 something centimeter wide. And the crystal here was basically lost in the, in the matrix, lost in space. You cannot see it properly. So we studied the piece and then we came to, this, to the decision to make a very big trim work to obtain this result. This is the same specimen, the same cluster that is here. So, with the trimming process, we removed all the matrix around and we also studied the piece to give the best display. So this part is actually this part. And in this 
shape, you could not see this fantastic piece with the twinning, with the twin crystal, etc. So this is also how and what we do in the laboratory. Another very good example of preservation of uh, very good specimens. This is a very good fluorite from Puy-Saint-Golmi, another of the Galois blue fluorides. This piece uh, was about 40 something centimeter wide. Unfortunately, it came out from the mine again during the operation days, the operative days of the mine, and the blasting killed big part of the specimen. So the specimen came to the lab in this status, and with the owner, <coughs> we decided to save two specimens, one here and one here. With which criteria we decided to preserve these two specimens? First, we observed the mm, aesthetic of the pieces, and then we decided we went through uh, a criteria with the less damages that take care about the quantity of damages. Okay. So we decided to save this specimen that is coming from this side. The specimen has been cleaned chemically, has been trimmed and then has been restored slightly. Few little restoration, just, just to have it perfectly as it was originally. And the second piece, this one. Fantastic piece. As you can see, the luster is not altered. And this is a very, very sensible kind of fluoride. If you put this specimen into every smooth acid, you will kill completely the luster. So you, you have to know exactly what to do. And this is extremely important that the, the, the technicians that are working in the laboratory knows exactly what they have to do and they know exactly the reaction of each species in each acid that we are using, each process. As I, see, as I said before, all the treatments to prepare art pieces and mineral specimens are exactly equally worth and required, in fact, by analogy. This is a fantastic item that without the help and the work of a laboratory would not exist. And this as well is a fantastic piece of tourmaline from Brazil that without our work would have not exist. So we have to preserve this specimen, this item, and this item also. So the target is a preservation of the model of the modern mineral laboratories. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Okay. Thank you, Rob.